Hammer time! All right, so this is our fluoride ion selective electrode setup. Um, this is a combination electrode, so the reference and the analytical uh, ref, uh, electrode are all in one, so we just have the, the one body. That's kind of what most people are used to because most pH electrodes will be like that as well. Um, there is a filling solution in the electrode, so hopefully you'll find it. It'll be immersed in a solution. It's good to keep it in contact with the solution that does contain fluoride unless we're storing it dry in the box, but when we're using it, we generally leave it out in between lab days. Um, there's a, um, a filling solution in here, and this one, this one's almost completely empty, so I can see. There's a hole, and this is where we add the filling solution, so it'll be nearby. So you want to check. Um, if it's been filled recently, it might only be down a little. Uh, you can always top it off, never hurts. So the bottle goes in, squeeze the, and you can see the filling solution. Uh, up to near the level of the of the hole. That's as far as you can fill it anyway. Um, and so you should check that every time before you start to use the electrode. It's usually pretty convenient to have the uh, electrode held in place. It's good to stir the sample so we have it sort of set up on the stir bar. So all we're going to do is plug the meter in. And the screen lights up. And we're going to simply go to a page that gives millivolt readings. So it says oper operator menu question mark and some other gibberish. It thinks it's January 1st of 2000 or 1900. I don't know which. But all we're going to do is switch to millivolt. And so you see millivolt temperature is the white writing on the number one button. And white is the second function. So you're simply going to press second function. And then the one or the millivolt temp and we get a reading in millivolts. You can ignore the fact that it says pH. The millivolts are going to be the data. Getting ready to make a measurement, we'll follow the same procedure every time. So we're going to move the elect remove the electrode, probably easiest to kind of take it out and raise it up however you like. We're going to, the solution that you found the electrode in, we're going to set that aside because um, that's what you're going to put it in at the end of the experiment. So we'll set that aside. Um, we will then rinse the electrode, if you're near a sink, over a beaker, however you choose to, with the dist uh, distilled water. We simply squirt some on there. And then we don't um, rub the electrode at the sensing element, which is the bottom. So we can kind of wipe the water off. And then for the bottom, we just dab it lightly. It goes back in the holder. Put our sample. And then you can move things up and down as needed. Sample. You want to make sure that bottom of the electrode is well immersed. It doesn't have to be to the bottom of the beaker, but we need to make sure that the electrode sensing element is fully immersed. And then we're going to use the stir plate to stir. We stir for three minutes, and then we take a reading from the meter. Here's your last sample. I'm just going to do the process essentially one more time. And rinsing the electrode. In this case, I'm probably not even concerned about dabbing it off or drying it. And then simply immerse the electrode in the solution that was there when you got there. Um, generally speaking, like pH electrodes, we don't want to let this dry out unless we're putting it into long-term storage. So from week to week or lab period to lab period, we'll leave the electrode immersed in an appropriate solution. Final step, just to simply shut down the meter, all we're going to do is unplug it.